La registrazione è avviata. Ok. Questa è la registrazione della la seconda parte della lezione di 16 dicembre. Eh, cercheremo di andare sulla lavagna con la verifica di ipotesi, passare a inglese. Oh, oh, oh. Ok. Prima della pausa abbiamo uh, fatto um, questa osservazione che um, la veri uh, we made the following uh, observation that uh, the conjecture, the hypothesis that uh, the mean value is uh, mu zero uh, somehow should be uh, verified uh, if uh, we have uh, good knowledge of this constant C0 and uh, if we have N uh, big enough. Uh, but uh, somehow, how big is this uh, guy N? And moreover, uh, what kind of uh, comparison, what kind of uh, justification of our uh, uh, conjecture uh, check uh, is done? This depends um, uh, especially on the fact that we assume that our normal distribution uh, practically characterizes all this uh, statistical data and behind this statistical data we have uh, normal distributions with the same uh, mu and sigma and uh, of course we assume that they are independent. Okay. To justify uh, and uh, see uh, how we can uh, prepare our algorithm, now we shall uh, assume that uh, there are Two important uh, things uh, we can say if now we start to interpret x1, xn as normal distributions. So if x1, xn are uh, independent normal distributions, distributions uh, in some sense we have to choose what shall be the meter to show the um, smallness of our error when we make the conjecture mu is equal mu zero the meter in this case shall be connected with uh, the standard normal distribution therefore we know that together with these guys with uh, presumably uh, mean value mu zero and sigma in, uh, parameters, uh, there is another standard normal um, deviation, uh, standard normal uh, distribution with parameters zero and one that we uh, discussed before and we made some numerical calculations with uh, mean value zero and uh, um, deviation one or variation. So always when uh, you have a check of some of your conjectures, this can be normal distribution, this can be some exponential distribution, always in the um, check of the uh, hypothesis conjecture, you have to mention what you are using to justify your um, conjecture. In our case, we shall use the standard normal distribution because here no parameters. We have 0, 1 fixed and we have to connect these normal distributions with Z. Of course, uh, in uh, this case, 
we can uh, take uh, x1 plus x2 plus x and so on xn over n this is we mentioned this guy with uh, xn bar the mean value uh, we can compute the variation what is the variation of uh, xn bar Can you help me? This is very important observation. This is part of the proof of uh, uh, the law of big numbers. Uh, first of all, you have the sum. Let us first compute. May I write here? Can you see? Yes. OK. If we write x1 plus x2 plus xn, only this the variation, how was computed. If they are independent between uh, uh, then these uh, random variables, what we can say about variation? Variation of the sum was, we did this for two independent Gaussian random variables, but you can of course do for any number. So we know that variation of the sum is sum the of sum variation. Of exactly. Therefore, this shall be n times uh, the variation of this guy, that is n sigma square. OK, but what is the relation between this guy and this guy? This is the sum divided by n. When you have factor variation of random variable and if you have constant how this constant goes outside the variation it was do you remember this is also very important this is variation of epsilon and what i have to write in front yes Please. C squared. Right. C squared. This is fundamental because this is second moment connected with second moment, so C squared. So if you use this, you shall have from 1 over n, 1 over n squared, and therefore this shall be sigma squared times n divided by n squared. I apply this relation and also this relation. So C. We have this guy n. Now you, you can simplify n with n square and you get sigma square divided by n. This is very important because, as we said, for us, the question about variation is fixed. We haven't any problem. Variation is no, but we are looking for the mean value. Therefore, on the basis of this uh, observation, uh, we can say that uh, this is uh, very close to the variation of um, zeta because uh, let me now clean this line because we do not need more this part. We justified our calculation. I have to take um, x n bar uh, of course we have to take uh, minus mu zero and divide by the square root of this sigma divided by square of n so uh, what we can say based on this variation because we can put this uh, uh, Actually, from this we have V of x n bar divided by uh, sigma. Sorry, we cannot see the bottom of the whiteboard. Thank you. Welcome. Here we have uh, square of this guy divided by square of 
m is equal to 1. I can rewrite this um, quantity, the variation, as um, uh, in this way, from this with this. And you can see that uh, practically this means that uh, on level of variation, xn bar divided by this quantity is like our normal distribution, standard normal distribution, z with parameter 0 and 1. In fact, if all these um, random variables have mu zero as mean value, we can write also of x bar is uh, um, mu zero. So on level of expectation and variation, you see that we have this approximation. What does it mean, this approximation? If you take the expectation of this, this because we know that the expectation of x and bar is mu zero. This is the assumption. Now we are uh, arguing with uh, uh, normal uh, distribution with parameters mu zero and sigma. So expectation of this guy is zero. Expectation of this guy by definition is zero. Variation of this guy, you can compute, mu zero is not entering in the calculation of the variation, and uh, the variation of uh, our quantity here is the variation, as we have seen from here, is exactly the variation of one. If the expectation and the variation of our quantities in this relation one are satisfied, we shall say that uh, Yes, probably we have really a nice connection between x and bar, our Gaussian um, distribution with expectation mu zero, and making this new um, Gaussian distribution, we shall have something that is uh, on level of expectation and variation over zeta. So we have to compare these two guys. So this is the first fact that is uh, necessary to justify our uh, conjecture of uh, the verification of the conjecture. The fact that we have chosen uh, as a quantity that measures the uh, conjecture mu equal mu zero, we have chosen zeta, the zero one uh, standard normal distribution, um, that uh, thanks to this uh, uh, change uh, uh, is um, uh, something that uh, uh, allows us from Xn to go to the check of zeta. Okay, after this first step, let us call this step one. Step one practically explains why we have the relation one on level of expectation and variation. Before cleaning the whiteboard, let me ask if this uh, relation that is computed with uh, variation is, and expectation is clear. Okay, now our next step, step two.
Therefore, we have to uh, compute probability that our um, quantity x minus mu zero divided by sigma, this is x bar, divided by square of n, this is uh, x n bar should be, x bar is clear that depends on n. So we want to show and to evaluate uh, and this should be bigger than what? Uh, remember our C. If now uh, we put uh, this is X bar. OK, OK. Actually, this shall be connected with uh, let us compute this bigger than C zero. Here we have to say square of sigma, actually sigma, and here we have square of n. Let us check that this inequality coincides with this inequality. I think this is almost clear because square of n from here can be put, uh, we can put above. So we rewrote this inequality. The only thing we put uh, as a factor square of n over sigma. So this inequality zero practically implies this inequality. And our goal now is to compute this probability. But uh, with respect to what? Since already this quantity is uh, very close to zeta, we have we have our meter. This is not the probabilistic uh, with um, uh, normal distribution with mu and sigma, but we have uh, uh, we we may use now our normal distribution, standard normal distribution. So this is equivalent, and we know that. This can be uh, computed as probability zeta to be bigger with absolute value, of course, uh, bigger than uh, C0 square of n over sigma. Uh, by the way, uh, our um, Uh, probability uh, because uh, here uh, and restrict our attention to the case when, uh, for example, we can take our zeta to be positive because remember what was this? Uh, when we computed before the uh, break, uh, probability model zeta bigger than some a. What was this? This was integral. And now I have to put a uh, modulus of x bigger than a. And here we have a minus x squared divided by 2, 1 over square of 2 pi dx. This is the probability. But what does it mean x bigger than a? We may have here a small picture. So if this is our x and if this is the Standard normal distribution. Remember that standard normal distribution is uh, something like this. So what does it mean? Small was a fix bigger than one but than a. This means from a to plus infinity, or we take minus a to minus infinity. We have two pieces, and it is clear that this integral shall be two times 
integral from a to infinity. Therefore, I can replace this guy with two times integral from a to infinity. And of course, in this case, if you use this relation, appearance of two, then we can uh, substitute this guy thanks to this picture. We can substitute this guy with two times probability that zeta is bigger than C0 square of N over sigma. This is important. Now we shall deal with this probability in order to measure our um, statistical data. One second. This is done. Okay, so this is Okay. Now, practically, we have to uh, see that um, uh, this probability shall be very small when uh, n is um, chosen, uh, when uh, we have this uh, quantity. This quantity to be small means that uh, we pose this guy, let us suppose that this guy is alpha. And our goal shall be to take alpha sufficiently small. Of course, if this is uh, already clear, we practically, thanks to our step one, we succeeded to reduce um, our uh, test to the fact that this uh, probability shall be uh, very uh, small. We have to see that uh, alpha is very small. This practically means that uh, probability that uh, our um, test to be in C in this set or not in C will have specific probability, but this probability to be justified rigorously is connected with our normal standard normal distribution with parameters zero and one. And now we shall go to the third step to show how practically we can verify that alpha is very small. Uh, using, of course, transferring our uh, test here to the test with uh, uh, data expressed in Z. So if the step two is clear, let me stop for a moment and ask you if uh, you understand that uh, this uh, probability can be associated with the check that uh, the uh, probability uh, associated with zeta is standard normal distribution is very small. Um, yes, but maybe if later you could do a practical example, it will be... Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, have in mind that now I uh, pose uh, the parameters and then we shall work with numerical values of these parameters. Okay. Some of parameters shall be given, some of parameters you shall compute. Among them is uh, especially this guy, because now we can uh, uh, say that uh, uh, it is important to have this quantity. Uh, actually, this is the quantity that we shall compute. As you can see, if alpha is given, now we go to step three. So step three requires that uh, simply I put this uh, alpha. Uh, and uh, let me remind you that uh, here I shall put everything 
from step two on this line. This was on one on the other hand, two times probability zeta bigger than. Let us call this. Uh, this is the random variable standard. And this quantity we shall call with zeta small zeta the alpha. This zeta alpha is also important. So this is C. And our zeta alpha is given, let us uh, recall you, C0 square of N divided by sigma. As you can see here, we have uh, here for zeta alpha, we have uh, all parameters that we know. C0, I said you that we have to define C0 from the very beginning. Sigma is known. This is also a parameter that shall be given to you. N is also number of statistical data. So we define zeta, zeta alpha. And uh, this is bigger than zeta alpha. And as you can see, for any alpha, zeta alpha can be defined to, through this relation, vice versa. If zeta alpha is given, this guy, then alpha satisfies this relation. This is what we did uh, the, uh, deduced from step two. And now we are going to step three. The final step, how we shall verify our conjecture to have the algorithm. So, This we said that this is zeta alpha. So what we are doing? Uh, of course, uh, if we know step three, uh, we can say that uh, C zero given. Sigma is given. Uh, what we can vary is this number n. We have to be choo we have to choose n sufficiently large. But how large? We are saying no. Since we don't know if n is sufficiently large, let me define this alpha. So we shall say alpha is given small positive number. So we can say 0 0.1. And this relation shows that probability that this guy is bigger than zeta alpha is very small. So if we have C0 sigma alpha given, we are going to define zeta alpha. So what is zeta alpha? We compute this C0 square of N divided by sigma. So, once this zeta alpha is given, we can say uh, N varies. Let us choose uh, uh, N. Uh, such that uh, this is our the alpha. And now let us make the following check. X1 plus Xn divided by N. We know that uh, this is uh, X bar minus mu zero. All this guy in numerator we have to divide by what is written here, divide by sigma divided by square of n. And we are asking if this is bigger than zeta alpha. Again, let us repeat. C0, sigma and alpha are given. 
after this, we define this quantity. This quantity, of course, needs also our n. So we should take n also given because these are our, our data. Presumably, they are very big, but uh, we don't know how big are they. In any case, if n is given, I can define this quantity, zeta. And then we simply check. Uh, if our statistical data satisfy this inequality, then we can say the conjecture not true. If instead we have opposite inequality, therefore x1 plus xn over n minus mu 0 divided by this is smaller than zeta alpha, then if we have smaller or equal than zeta alpha, then the conjecture is true. The important thing again is uh, uh, to have uh, this um, zeta alpha, uh, which is defined through uh, our parameters, and uh, then to see for this zeta alpha if this is true or not true. Actually, uh, here you can see that. Uh, in this uh, uh, setting, uh, still what we check is this inequality. Finally, uh, we, with this check, comparison with zeta alpha, practically reduced uh, and justified our uh, conjecture using probability with respect to stand with respect to the standard normal distribution so um, the important thing is uh, here to take uh, your uh, zeta alpha and uh, somehow to compute in explicit way your zeta alpha of course there is another uh, important uh, relation because this we said that that can be replaced by this. Therefore, if you take probability zeta bigger than zeta alpha is equal alpha over two, since this is the uh, standard normal distribution, we can say if alpha is given, we said zeta alpha defined in this way was only to justify. This is only to justify. Practical way to find zeta alpha is this relation. Because we justified already on level of Gaussian distribution this passage. But you can see, if we make uh, this uh, definition of zeta alpha not in this way, but in this way, then zeta alpha here, defined in this way, shall be our final algorithm. And uh, with Excel, what we did before the break, given zeta alpha, we found this quantity. Now, if we turn back, we can say to check our error, given zeta alpha in this way, to show if um, um, alpha is small, we can still have this uh, zeta alpha, but then uh, we can uh, say that um, with this choice of zeta alpha, alpha shall be defined in this way. 
and we shall check if alpha is small or not. Of course, this means that we have to be very careful which of the parameters are given, which shall be defined. In this setting, what uh, we have uh, done is um, if alpha is given, it is not necessary to uh, move vari n. You simply forget about this guy and solve this problem. Given alpha, you, found, you find zeta alpha. You find zeta alpha and you put here and check your conjecture. If this is true, then mu is not mu zero. If this is smaller than zeta alpha, therefore if uh, normal distribution check uh, shows smaller than zeta alpha, then we can say that we have our conjecture. Actually, the most important thing in this approach is the following. Given alpha to find zeta alpha. If you can do this, then uh, it is possible to have concrete uh, example of uh, uh, how the algorithm is working. OK, now let us do the following. Since here, the important relations are the following. On one hand, zeta alpha is C0 square of N sigma. On the other um, hand, probability zeta bigger than zeta alpha is alpha over two. So we said if N uh, sigma first scenario is sorry we cannot see the top thank you first scenario following if we have n sigma and um, c0 given then what you are doing compute zeta alpha from here, then you compute probability zeta bigger than zeta alpha, which is XL. You find this guy, you find alpha, and then you are uh, asking alpha is small. If alpha is small, we are satisfied. This is one possible approach using exactly XL. This is the first scenario. And then, of course, if you use uh, this scenario, you have all parameters because at the end you need four parameters n sigma c0. But you have the fourth ones, zeta alpha, that can be computed with this formula, and then you can compute alpha. This is one possibility. If, on the other hand, uh, sigma c0 and alpha are given, what do you have to do? You take your alpha, you put here p zeta minus uh, p zeta bigger than zeta alpha equal alpha over 2 with the normal distribution and you find zeta alpha. If you find zeta alpha, you use this relation and from the equation, you find your n. If n is sufficiently large and you can use this uh, n uh, to say we need exactly this n experiments in order to be sure that our uh, verification that is here, the verification, the final check is this one. If this is true or not true. Therefore, as you can see, you may have, uh, in any case, 
if you have totally four parameters participating here in the uh, test that are n, sigma, c0, and alpha, you can choose three basic parameters and then define the fourth one uh, using uh, this relation. Now we can take a small example in order to convince you that this is working. Especially I want to uh, understand um, if I take alpha equal um, 1 over 10, for example, uh, then uh, let us do take 2 over 10, then alpha over 2 is uh, 1 over 10, and I want to find uh, P zeta bigger than zeta alpha equal 1 over 10. Let us try to find this with Excel, because in this case we shall find our zeta alpha. I shall switch to uh, uh, share the screen on my Excel. Again, approximately, not very precisely. So what we have uh, uh, here, we have normal distribution. OK. And uh, you said that here I have to put uh, let us put, for example, uh, 2, uh, virgula 0, virgula 1, virgula uh, false. 0, 0, 005, uh, we need, uh, oh, this is very good. So uh, we can put uh, slightly bigger, 2.2. Uh, 0, 3. Uh, 1 over 10, we need slightly bigger. So uh, let us with 3 directly. 3. Oh, this is smaller and smaller. So this shall be smaller than 2. 1.5. Ah, this is very close. If we need uh, 1 over 10, probably slightly smaller. Uh, slightly in order to uh, 1.6. Yes, this is very, very good. 1.6. If now uh, I found, since I use the standard uh, distribution, shall stop uh, this calculation and uh, shall stop the sharing and we shall uh, switch to the screen. So when I take 1 over 10, uh, I found that uh, zeta alpha was uh, 1.6, I think. So what we have to do in this case in our check? Uh, first of all, zeta alpha is connected with this guy. Uh, we said that uh, this C0 was 2. Sigma, uh, we don't know how is sigma. Let us take some value of sigma. For example, sigma equal uh, 1 for simplicity. So if sigma is 1, C0 is 2, uh, what shall be zeta alpha? 1.6 is uh, 2 times square of n divided by 1. And uh, as you can see from here, n can be chosen something like, uh, I think uh, if I choose n equal 2, this should be OK. But uh, you have finally the probability 1 over 10. So this is very rapidly converging. From here, I found uh, n is uh, um, 1 over uh, 1.6 divided by 2, 0 0.8 to the power 2. This is in any case uh, something smaller than 1. 
in order to get some result uh, that should be uh, much better, let us take sigma uh, 10. If sigma is 10, this shall be 8, because 1 point by 10 is 16, divided by 2 is 8, 8 is square of n, so n is 8 to the power 2. So we need 64 to make the test with 64 numbers here. And as you can see, is what we know. We use the second scenario. We don't know n, but we knew sigma, c0 and alpha. And what we get that n should be something like 64. So we take 64 experiments, 64 data. We don't need to take 60, uh, 640. We need only 64. And you may put in this test, zeta alpha is given. Your statistical data are given. N is also found. So you put everything here and make the test comparison with this zeta alpha. If this is bigger, conjecture is false. If this is smaller, very good, everything is okay. So this is the example, and I think uh, independently, I have chosen the worst example, uh, that alpha is given and you look for zeta alpha. If zeta alpha is already defined, alpha can be found very easy with Excel. But also with Excel, using kind of experiments, I succeed also to solve the inverse problem given alpha to find zeta alpha. So I think this is the key point uh, and uh, with this uh, uh, lecture we cannot uh, close of course uh, say that everything is done in probability and statistics but at least we have uh, the idea how um, some basic facts from probability and statistics can be in combination with uh, uh, simple uh, software like uh, Excel. Uh, with this, uh, let us see um, if you have some short questions. Uh, I think with uh, the appointments we fix for the next week, we can, I shall only answer to your questions and try to solve some practical uh, examples and uh, problems that uh, typically are the practical part of our uh, final exam. OK, so if you don't mind, I shall stop the register registering, recording.